I checked back in with myself. Sis, you are organically very sad. Like, very, very sad. I heard Mercury is in retrograde. I don't know what it means, but everybody's talking about it, so it can't be good. Today we are going to talk about microdosing versus antidepressants. As someone who has lived experience with microdosing magic mushrooms and antidepressants, today I'm specifically talking about Zoloft. Intense clinical depression. If you get in the pool right now, we'll give you a Zoloft. I will be comparing and contrasting the effects of both and letting you know which one I think is more potent and effective as a means of fighting depression and treatment resistant depression. But if you've been here before, I bet you can guess which one I'll be vouching for. And if you're new here, welcome. We are a realm dedicated to psychedelics and sacred plant medicine, all about demystifying and destigmatizing the trip. If you get a kick out of this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. And you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon at Chrysantilis. The following video is made for the purpose of education and harm reduction. We are not promoting the use, procurement, or possession of any plant medicine or substance. We encourage everyone to do further research and prioritize safety. A little backstory on me and my depression. The first time I felt like I might be depressed was in high school. I felt like, do you know what? I feel a little bit more sad, organically sad sad than most of my peers around me. I feel like something really might be going on. I told some of my family about this and I was literally so underwater in terms of the college admission process, SATs, all of my APs, all that kind of stuff that I really just had to like drop prioritizing my mental health and roll with college admissions as dark and unfortunate as that was. Whew. So it's always kind of at these cusp times. I was on the cusp of college then, and then when I was on the cusp of graduating college, I checked back in with myself and I said, hey, look, wait, sis, you are organically very sad. Like very, very sad. I heard Mercury is in retrograde. I don't know what it means, but everybody's talking about it, so it can't be good. It's giving stormy weather. Don't know why. no sun up in the skies it's giving your it's giving seek help, like seek therapy, right? And I had been in and out of therapy for a while, so I went and I talked to a psychiatrist and I was diagnosed with not just depression, but also anxiety and ADHD, something that would have been very helpful to know I had all the way back to like middle school, elementary school. So I was immediately prescribed Soloft. I had been sitting with plant medicine for a few years at that point in time, but but there wasn't really any talk or studies behind microdosing in the way that there is today, which is to say we have so many more resources on starting a microdose practice today. So me, I immediately got prescribed Adderall and Soloft. Adderall is something that we still cool, we still kick it. I see my girl about once a week or so. I still chef's kiss to Adderall. That my best friend, she a real bad bitch, got her own money, she don't need no nig. She has been very helpful to me in my experiences as a video editor, so this video is not going to be about her. This video is between me and Zoloft, okay? You wanna hear how me and this bitch fell out? You wanna hear a story about how me and this bitch fell out? It's kinda long, but it's full of suspense. You know what I'm saying? So me and Zoloft, as soon as I got on Zoloft, I started feeling a little bit less depressed. And I said, okay, okay, so I don't have to feel sad. But then I also didn't feel happy. And then I started feeling not hungry. I started feeling not, let's just say all of my appetites went away. You know, my appetites for food, my appetites for woohoo and little steamy steams, my appetites for everything. I describe it as I felt like Flat Stanley. I felt just like a piece of paper. I was just experiencing compression like a zip file. It was not 
good, I couldn't eat, I couldn't do many of the things that are enjoyable bodily functions. I just, I, it was not happening for me. And I remember feeling like, okay, I don't feel sad anymore, but I also don't feel anything. So this needs to stop. I went ahead and made the mistake of quitting cold turkey. Don't quit your antidepressants cold turkey. That is not the way to go. It can be very dangerous. For me, I was like busy with graduating college and again, my mental health just went on the back burner in the light of all of those things. So I just quit. Should not have quit. That could have been lethal in terms of certain folks quitting Zoloft have been known to commit sideways or unalive themselves. So if you're watching this right now and you are on an antidepressant and you are thinking of quitting this medication, do not quit cold turkey, y'all. Please taper off. I was just a senior in college and I had not been warned. Just a quick side note, Zoloft is the only antidepressant SSRI that I have tried. So there is a chance that there is an antidepressant that would be more potent for me than my microdosing and that I just haven't tried that. Antidepressants, especially SSRIs, also come at a cost of interacting poorly with many plant medicines, which is why I haven't dove too deep into them. SSRIs, when combined with magic mushrooms, can result in serotonin syndrome, which can be dangerous. So please just keep that in mind. I'm only talking about Zoloft here. I'm not talking about any other medication. I started to feel better after I quit Zoloft. And then a few years after that, I started hearing echoes and murmurs of the microdose conversation. And as someone who was already in community and practice with psychedelics and sacred plant medicine, I'm kind of like, you know, I got my ear to the streets. I'm kind of like, what's going on with her? I am sickened, but curious. What's going on with the microdose? Like, I want to know. So I believe the way I started taking microdoses was just like eating a little bit of a cap, eating a little bit of a stem. I wasn't really getting all the way into the, the capsule form, which is where I am now. I am a capsule girl. So this is a few years later, post-college, 2020, 2021. Then I get back into therapy and I decide for my own mental health i already have a committed practice of mindfulness and meditation shout out to headspace app not a sponsor but if you're really trying to get on your meditation game i'm telling you i was trying to meditate unguided throughout college it did not work the only thing that has worked for me has been guided meditation and that has been in the headspace i do use headspace till this day like i meditate every morning and that practice goes hand in hand with my microdose practice, especially in terms of mood lifting, mindfulness, and staying present. Out of all of the things that magic mushrooms and similar psychedelics do, helping us stay in the moment, not helping us, forcing us to live presently, like not giving us a choice, just like you're gonna live today. That is magic mushrooms and that is also mindfulness. So yeah, quick aside, I'd pair all of this with meditation too and it has done wonders. I decided while I was getting back into therapy, I'm going to commit to my microdose practice. So what did that look like? I was able to, for the first time, just source straight mushroom powder. And that made it so easy for me to be like, okay, now all I need is capsules, right? So I found some like vegan vegetarian capsules online and you can very much get the empty ones from Amazon and make your own shiitake capsules, okay? In terms of legal, I will refer to all of your microdosing as microdosing shiitakes. But yes, if you if you get some shiitake powder, all you need is the capsules and they come in like 100. I get this size 00 on Amazon. Very easy to get that part. So I started filling up these, oh my gosh. The way that I started microdosing and filling up these capsules is like really embarrassing to think about today because I literally had the capsules. I opened the capsules, filled the microdose up 
by hand like the amount like it took all day and it took so much longer than it needed to take it was literally ridiculous and then you know I'd put the top of the capsule on and close it and then go and do the the next one and it took way too long y'all get a capsule press for your shiitakes get a capsule like a pill press do not do what I did do not do it by hand because it's just a tremendous waste of time okay but I made about a hundred of those and they lasted like I want to say like a year right because I started doing them one day on a few days off and it was just really a great experience it was an elevated experience so to speak I I felt noticeably better noticeably less depressed and some days I was even able to use it as a replacement of Adderall and just not take Adderall which is great because Adderall has some stronger negative side effects especially in terms of my appetite whereas like if I take Adderall in the morning I'll be able to eat until about lunchtime and then it'll be very hard for me to eat after that including dinner and for anyone who's like lower your dose I have I've lowered my dose like two times already and it's still just a side effect of Adderall the effects of Zoloft and the effects of magic mushroom microdoses it's giving night and day night and day I do not feel flat when I take my microdoses I feel the opposite of flat I feel multi-dimensional I feel so much more able to do so much more and I am so grateful for the experience I'm so grateful to have the option to be able to do that and to be able to access the medicine about a year after my first microdose I was able to get a pill press and yo you can whip up like hundreds of hundreds of shiitake capsules like that in a couple of hours a pill press is really where it's at I have an upcoming video that's about how to make your microdose capsules and keep an eye out for that one because I will be going into depth on my process for making like 200 capsules in a couple of hours back to magic mushrooms versus Zoloft with both of them I felt less depressed but with Zoloft I felt worse because I could not feel happy or anything I felt just like this flat like AIS type of entity it was really bizarre and wild I felt almost like sedated and I just want to assure you I am not human and I cannot feel pain and with microdosing I feel happier I feel more focused I feel more creative sometimes when I fall into the pits of depression I won't want to microdose and I know that's really effed up but that's the only time where I have to kind of like fight to microdose because yeah when you're depressed you kind of just want to stay depressed it's really counterintuitive but sometimes microdosing affects my appetite not too much sometimes I will take two microdose pills especially on the weekends and have kind of a low dose sort of experience which is also really lovely but yeah microdosing is giving what antidepressants should be giving but that what they could never give microdosing and magic mushrooms in general has the pharmaceutical industry in a tizzy right now I mean they're trying to get together their own little compass pathways and all that kind of stuff just the antidepressant the girls could never they could never and I think that that's one of the reasons why mushrooms has stayed a schedule one substance they absolutely do not need to be that but for some reason they are but it's time now to talk about what we've learned today for me it has been a wonderful tool to be able to heal myself to take my own depression and anxiety into my own hands and that's another thing my anxiety was completely eliminated in taking my magic mushroom capsules it's something that to this day I don't really have to deal with anymore and leaving college I am about like five years out of college now but leaving college I had severe and crippling anxiety for my future and again that came out of a place of not being able to live presently but having to live in the future what's going to happen am I safe I felt super unstable I felt very paranoid magic mushrooms has very much assisted me with that and the daily practice of microdosing for a year has eliminated that anxiety from my life as well as taking myself out of situations that were harmful to me that I didn't need to be in relationships that sort of a thing I was empowered to do that by my lack of depression thanks to my producing I get a little bit more into that in other videos but yes making my own microdoses and committing myself to a practice of mindfulness microdosing and therapy 
has completely changed my life. So I am here to share that with y'all as a shining example of the peace of mind that you could achieve when you are able to prioritize these things in your life, commit to them, all that good stuff. And for more on this topic, please be sure to check out my microdose playlist and my trippy stuff playlist. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you got a kick out of this video, again, please subscribe to this channel. I also sell some of this Keep It Trippy merch on my Threadless shop. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Chrysantilis. And I recently soft-launched a Patreon. So shout out to my six current patrons. Y'all are really holding it down for me. Anybody who is curious about supporting me financially, please just peep my Patreon. That's all I'm saying. Just look at it. Just look at it, okay? But yeah, there's some exclusive merch on there, exclusive videos, exclusive photos you will see nowhere else. So please check that out. Link in the description. That's gonna wrap it up for us today on magic mushroom microdoses versus the Zoloft, the antidepressants. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and don't forget to keep it trippy.